uh, what's a fun fact is that the time it took to get to New York from Westport uh, around the time that the railroad in the 18, let's say the 1850s, was almost identical to the time it takes to get from Westport to New York today. Mm -hmm. It was only 10 minutes longer back then, um, and uh, give or take some. Now, a couple of factors with that, there were less train stations, but it you know, says something about um, the, uh, the state of uh, uh, Metro North at that time. What's fun is that Fitzgerald, in, in many ways, I just wrote an essay for uh, Fitzgerald Society, and some argue that The Beautiful and Damned, written, it was published in 22, but he wrote half the book while he was in Westport and half of it's set in Westport. Uh, some have claimed that to be the first true suburban novel, the first novel of suburbia that the two main characters, young married, move out here, set up a house. And, you know, that continues in the 50s with, again, uh, Sloan Wilson, living on Evergreen Avenue in Westport, writes The Man in the Gray Flannel Suit. Yes. And one of my favorites is I'm actually doing this recording uh, from Old Mill Beach in Westport. So we're about um, just about a half a mile away from the Fitzgerald house uh, from here. But Rod Serling lived in Westport. And what mm -hmm. I love is some of his great, you know, his, uh, a stop at Willoughby, his favorite single episode from the first year of um, uh, The Twilight Zone. Yeah. yeah, was written about Westport. He wrote it while he was in the Westport. And it's about a commuter who goes, who's totally harried by his uh, suburban wife and goes into his advertising job where he's harried by his boss. So what I always love about this, and uh, Weston had a lot of this too, is just that this is really the archetype of the suburbs. So Hendrik uh, Willem van Loon um, is a, a, a composer completely forgotten historian, except in, the, in his time, we were talking about why some people are remembered and, and some aren't. Van Loon was really the number one ch child children's historian. Mm -hmm. he, he wrote books for children. He, he illustrated them, longtime Westport resident. Mm -hmm. But um, his son wrote, as a rural Greenwich village, Westport came into its own with the Model T Ford. Artists, musicians, and writers could afford a summer cottage. A farmhouse could be bought for less than it costs to maintain a New York apartment. That was the quote. And the artistic ex-urbanites formed an ingrown group whose parties were as famous as their divorces were frequent. I Penn de Bois had that great line uh, that, that kind of, um, uh, he said this while in Westport. This sums up, I think, the entire uh, Beltanschung of the 20s, he said that work was an effort made between parties and the prohibition period summers in Westport exceeded, exceeded um, the riotness of uh, uh, New York. And, and I'm going to stop reading aloud in a second. But Van Wick Brooks, the great critic, um, friend of Roosevelt and on the cover of um, Time magazine, was quoted as saying, the road that ran between Westport and lower Manhattan became the axis on which turned the American literary movement that touched in one way or another every aspect of life in uh, the United States.